Hi, I'm Kelly Ashton and I'm an educator for Handy Quilter and we are in the Handy Quilter studio today and we're going to talk about the double hearts template. I've been so excited for this heart template. It has so many options for us. So we're going to start once again with um, ways that we can use it in a border or a sashing. Um, the heart template comes with two different size hearts. So the first one we use, I use the small heart. And I'm just, I've already stitched it out, so I'm just gonna show you how I hold the ruler to stitch it out, okay? So we're gonna put the needle down. We're gonna position the heart template, okay? And we're gonna move the machine around half of that heart, just like this. And we're gonna come right to a point, and it has a little, it fits perfectly right into that notch. So I don't have to raise my needle. I can leave the needle down, slide the heart out. Let me get those threads out of the way. And then I can just slide the foot through that bigger gap and sits right comfortably in that notch again. And now I finish stitching the rest way around that heart. Okay, now with this border design idea, I, I did hearts that were connected together. So I have to switch, or what I did was I switched this back around. I know it's a lot of switching, but it works. So we're gonna stitch over to here, and I'm gonna stop. And I want to be to the center of that heart again. And then I'm gonna do the left side of the heart, because that's right where my needle point is. Stitch around the half of it. Take my ruler out, flip it around, and then I can stitch the second half of it, just like that. Bump back over to there. I think I did an extra bump the first time. I do have to do some backtracking right there. Okay, and stitch it around. Third time's, third time's a charm, right? Okay, so I'm gonna get the scissors out since I have drug this thread all across the quilt. I'm gonna go over here to this heart right here. We did a kind of a tower of hearts. And the one thing I did with this tower is I also drew a center line with a white chalk pencil. And um, this ruler template has a lot of nice grids on it used for lining things up. Okay, so I'm gonna put the needle where I need it. I'm gonna slide this ruler into place. Now, when we talk about the lines and the grids that are on rulers, we talk about how it's really important that you're able to read handy gadgets or handy ruler or double heart template. So I can use the lines on this, etch, these etched lines on here if I do the right side first. So I'm gonna stitch around the right side of the heart. I'm gonna put my needle down. Okay, so when I flip the ruler over, now my etch lines are on the top instead of the bottom. So they're distorted to use them as a measuring guide. So right now, because I used them on the first side of the heart and my needle is in the position that I needed, I can finish stitching out that heart and not worry about if the lines are perfectly in place. Now I do have some backtracking on this guy. I have to go back down here and I'm gonna stop at that point. What I have found out with this um, double heart template is that if I start stitching right at the bottom, my hearts are gonna cross each other. So I took like two stitches down and then I did the big heart. And I used the chalk line and I lined up my etched lines. And I stitched around the right side of the heart and I'm stopping. I'm gonna flip the template over because my needle is, should be in the down position, I didn't put it down because I keep stringing thread around, but if it's in the down position, it's right where I need it to finish that heart. And I realize that you can't see very well if I move my hand, but my hand really needs to be over here holding down the ruler nice and stable as I move it around like that. Okay, then we'll move it back down. Then I'm gonna flip the ruler do the right side of this heart again. I've stitched down two stitches. Do around the right side of it, flip it over, and stitch that side. Okay, before we move on, I'm gonna stitch one little heart inside this big heart so you can see it actually stitched out. I'm gonna do a little tie-off stitch. 
I'm going to slip that ruler. It fits perfectly right around our foot. And so I'm looking at my etched, my chalk line here, matching it up with my chalk line there. <clears throat> and I'm going to stitch around this heart. I have to stop and move my hand. Okay, my needle is down. I can just move this without worry that I'm losing my place. Now, the only thing I have to line up now is on the bottom, I want to make sure that the, my goal, my target spot, is a fourth of an inch away from the, the, the edge on the bottom. Okay, can you see that? And I have to hold the ruler stable as I move it all the way around to the bottom, just like that. It stitches out just perfectly, a heart like that. For this next design right here, all I needed to do was mark a center point. So I would take a chalk pencil and mark a center point. Put my needle down in the center point. Okay, and I'm just gonna stitch. Let's get lined up perfectly. I'm gonna stitch around. And I am going to double stitch it so I end up right back in the center where I want to start the next one from. And I'm just going to rotate this all the way around. And the only thing I'm looking at, well, I'm making sure this fits snugly around where the needle is in the center. And then I'm looking up here to see that I finish a fourth of an inch away from the last petal or plume, whatever you'd like to call it. And then I'm going to move it and stitch all the way around and see how it, it's just kind of rotates right there on that foot when that foot's in a down position. And it nearly stitched out perfectly. I had a little tiny bit of over stitching. So with a little practice, I probably would make two of them just a little tiny bit smaller and you would never notice that there was a little bit of imperfection there. Okay, now, I like feathers. I don't know how you feel about feathers, but I really like to stitch feathers, and I really like to stitch feathers whimsically. I don't really like symmetry about them, so it's hard for me to make them symmetrical. But when I have something like a template to give me a spine, I can make them a lot more symmetrical. So when I first saw the heart template, that's what I kept seeing was a great spine for me to do feathers with. So I've stitched out some feathers, I really stitched a lot on the spine so you could see where the heart fit for that spine. And then I just filled in around that spine with feathers. I'm gonna advance the quilt and show you a couple of different ideas for spines that you can use or that you can do with this heart template. So on this first shape over here, I stitched out one big heart or one half of the big heart. I got to the center point right there and then I flipped around the heart and finished it this way. So I got this big S shape. Can you see that S shape? And in the center of the S shape I just stitched a couple of hearts and those hearts gave me a perfect way to start to give me the direction that I wanted my plumes to flow around that S shape. So I did start in the center, go around there, back to my spine. I like to stitch when I'm, especially if I'm doing the bump back feather, <clears throat> I like to start on the bottom and stitch around like that. I stitched several times on the spine so that would really stand out for you. And then who doesn't love a, a border with full of feathers? So with this right here, I stitched one half of the heart all the way there, and then I backed up. I backed up till it was, I don't know, not quite the tip of that curve. But then I ro rotated it like this, and rotated it like that. So I just flipped the template to do the, the spine, to fill, it would, could fill a border all the way across doing feathers. I hope you enjoy the double hearts templates like I have. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun creating new designs.